As an undergraduate, I perfected the art of falling asleep in class. I couldn't help it. A wave of fatigue would consume me and suddenly I was nodding off. These mid-class naps drew me to sleep research. Not to figure out the cause, but to understand the role of sleep. To do so, I began studying infants as the most dynamic shifts in sleep occur before age three. The gold standard for studying sleep is called polysomnography. It records several physiological measures to monitor nervous system and muscular activity, but it's impractical for most researchers. It's prohibitively expensive in both time and money, and access to these resources is rare. When these traditional methods were beyond my reach, I made the goal of my dissertation to create a more accessible sleep measurement technique. My idea was to parse down the number of measures and simplify the procedure. The benefits were considerable, as it would allow caregivers to put on the equipment and infants to sleep in their own crib. My study into this novel method, using wireless, cardiorespiratory, and movement sensors, began in late fall of 2019 when I received my first grant. One-year-old infants participated in five nights of sleep measurement to examine our primary sleep states, which are rapid eye movement sleep, or REM, and non-REM. After several weeks, the pool of good data comprised 38 nights. I was thrilled because this would have been nearly impossible to achieve with polysomnography. Few families could have disrupted their schedules and slept away from home for almost a week. Then of course came COVID and everything stopped. Fortunately, because the protocol was already designed to take place in the home, data collections were able to resume after only six months. As a result, I managed to collect 50 more nights of data before moving on to the coding and analysis. First, I used the movement data to delineate sleep from wake. Then, within the sleep periods, I visually examined the cardiorespiratory data, coding periods of time with lower rates as non-REM and those with higher and more variable rates as REM. The resulting total time spent in each state was comparable to that of one-year-olds who underwent polysomnography. This confirmed that the protocol was actually working. Visual coding still had flaws, though. It was labor intensive, subjective, and could only be done on a proprietary user interface. I wrote a programming code to account for this, which evaluated and state scores the raw cardiorespiratory value. Then I made both the code and the infant's data publicly available online for other researchers to build on. I created a solution for myself and hopefully others who can implement this technique in their own specific areas of study. By using more accessible methods, we can expand research on the role of sleep states and better understand why sleep is beneficial to learning and memory, thus adding more justification to my habit of falling asleep in class. Thank you.